when I first thought I would do a funeral at all is, I reread the play. Once I read the play for directing it, I realized that there are a lot of boring events in the play. And uh, we live in the 21st century. We deal with audience whose attention span is, uh, has been tampered by MTV. Uh, therefore, uh, it becomes a challenge to make a boring play exciting. So I started rereading and rereading the play, and then uh, it dawned on me that what would Ephigenia think if she was alive today? What would she remember? What would she say about these events? Around the same time, I met uh, Michael Sham, who's a professor of classics. I said, uh, well, you know, I'm doing a classic Greek tragedy. Would you like to help me rewrite it? I began to write up a translation and adaptation of the original play by adding passages from Thucydides and other passages from uh, other plays of Euripides. I thought it was interesting. I couldn't really, uh, I couldn't really see it in my mind's eye. And I think he had some trepidation because he didn't have a, a feel for it, a grasp of, of it, a way of tackling it in mind until I think he had a dream of the image of the dome or her skull and just really the beginning and last scene the sacrificial act we thought that we would stage the play entirely within that split second from the moment that Epigenaria sees the blade until the moment that the blade has cut her throat thinking that one's mind is able to foresee the future as well as review everything of the past in split seconds. So the idea was to create this scar, which is what the space is, the scar of Epigenia, within which the, all of these are taking place. I called a couple of people that I wanted to design the play, or Michael that uh, I wanted him to write, and uh, a group of actors. And I said, uh, I said one thing, I said, if you are willing to fail, let's do something. Because that's very important. If we agree that we are going to fail, and it really doesn't matter, it's an experiment, then we can open ourselves up to come what may. And that's exactly what we did. One of the things I love about Mahmoud is that he really means a collaborative effort. He is very open, he's very receptive to what the actors have to say. He considers all the views involved and he still has a very strong vision of what he wants the play to do. He's very comfortable with soliciting advice. He has no trouble saying, no, that I'm not quite comfortable with that. But he's, and he's as ready to say, that's great, Let, let's do it. I, I love Mahmoud, I think he's a, uh... Great guy, a, real, a brilliant director. Some of the ideas he comes up with out of nowhere are beautiful. I mean, obviously he's got some unorthodox techniques. He didn't think I was standing up straight, so he strapped a board to my back for several rehearsals. <laughs> and there's also a, a girl who's playing an old woman, and he made her wear a, a backpack full of 20 pounds of tools so that she would be stooped over like an old woman. There's times that you think he's got really good ideas, and you're like, yeah, that's, that's, that's something I never would have thought of. But there's other times that you just either want to go off into a corner and cry or slap the crap out of him. There's something about him where you're never quite sure if you're getting it straight. He really did bring this show together, and I don't think without his eccentric hand, it could have turned out as well as it did. Some people are addicted to opium. Some people are addicted to bicycling. Some are addicted to gym. I'm addicted to theater. And just like they would sacrifice their family for their addiction, I sacrifice mine for mine. The difference is that my family became my family knowing that, knowing that theater is the most important thing. The first problem that everybody has in a college theater is actors. Especially, we do not have a theater department, we have a program. Our actors are not trained. And in this case, it was a depth problem because everybody who walked into the theater, we accepted them as actors. This is my first acting experience since eighth grade. This is only my third time acting. It's my first stage three experience, but I've acted in other things. This is my first real 
theatric production. Line. 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 Sorry! I'm really proud of the cast. They, on the first couple uh, performances, um, were not very good. Uh, and by the, the end, people's really just improved, needed to improve, and did improve. Imagine that you're at the bottom of the sea, and uh, uh, there are uh, pieces of uh, wreckage of ships and coral, and uh, you know, and they're all in a kind of circle. But these wreckages all have the same brightness to them. They're not dark. They may be encrusted with some kind of coral or barnacles or something like that. But they're all like beige and gray. And there's an eerie silence to the whole thing. I started thinking completely abstract. And then I came up with the model that's downstairs with these structures that are nondescript. They don't represent anything. But it's more like a big jungle gym, see, so that the actors can leap on them and jump and bang on them. And because Mahmoud is a very physical director. He likes the actors to move around a lot and mm -hmm. grab things and pull themselves up. And last week, I, I was dressing the set, and I, I went down and I brought burlap and all sorts of stuff, and I was wrapping these things to make them look less and less like a wooden structure or a pipe structure. And then, so he comes over and he says, well, this is good, the way you're doing this. And then later, we're going to paint everything. I said, what do you mean, paint everything? We don't have to paint these. He says, oh yes, we have to make them all look nondescript and like that. And I, it, for the good of the set, I had to paint those structures. Saturday morning, I got, came in early, 9.30, and uh, before anybody arrived, and I sat there in the silence after they had primed everything the night before. So everything had a coat of white primer on it. And I just sat there in the silence. It, it, the whole thing had this spooky kind of sacred feel to it. It was a little awesome because I thought, oh my God, what have we made here? I was uh, part of a group that sort of loosely calling itself the Creation Project that uh, Mahmoud was also a part of this past summer. So uh, I met Mahmoud through that and after just a few meetings, he said, you know, I've got this play coming up. Would you be interested in doing the music for it? And he sort of laid this whole idea on me and told me about the play, but then also told me about how he was going to stage it, how he thought it was going to be this very interesting take on it, how it's going to be very contemporary because of the war that's going on now and how these issues seem to continue to repeat throughout history. We're really, really taking the idea of the, the head seriously. We're in a mind, there's constant mental activity. Uh, the mind is dying, there's some spits and spurts of other kinds of information going through it all the time and that the sound would be more or less continuous and you want to set up the idea that there are other streams of thought happening undercurrents uh, behind scenes things can, they can be accented uh, behind scenes or other ideas that are coming up and that that would be the role of the sound so even when there's no express music being made and a lot of those ideas where things were going to be more musical have been trimmed cut back. Um, but uh, the idea that the sound is acting behind the whole show and going most of the time yeah, it has remained. My name is Jason Stephen Murphy and I'm the video director for this show. I was brought in with the idea that the video would not be necessarily advancing the plot in that for most of the like discussion of what the video would have, it never really involved Iphigenia on the screen or action taking place on the screen. So the idea was at the beginning to use it as texture and to like contextualize it because there's some direct references to like contemporary wars and violence and the idea of bringing it into the now, but the video was really going to be the place where that was brought in. You know, not just for texture, but to really br hit it home that. I mean, this wasn't, these ideas of, like, sacrifice in the name of war just weren't things that were happening 
back in, you know, BC or ancient Greece, these are things that are happening right now. And so, I mean, he really kind of had me going out looking for images with that in mind, the idea of um, violence begetting violence. Working with Mahmoud is really interesting in that uh, he just, he seems really interested in like really pushing this. And that that's very exciting because if he had said, hey, we want you to do video for guys and dolls, it's going to be a very, it's, this, it, this is what it's going to be. It's going to be like it's been for the last 50 years. I would have said, you know, I'd rather flip burgers at like <laughs> McDonald's or something. But when he said like, you know, this is a very open scene and this is going to be something that hasn't been done before. And we're really looking for people that are interested in coming along as I push these borders. That, that was really exciting. And, you know, I, I hope that people are open to the fact that he's really kind of pushing them. I don't know, to be perfectly honest, I don't know how much the audience is going to get. And he assures me, no, they'll, they'll understand it through some kind, through lighting, through mood, through the sound, music, through visuals. They'll get the sense that this is not real time. I have always thought that theater is really not what's happening on the stage. Theater is happen it's what happens in the mind of the audience as they leave the stage. What matters is that person sitting there on the way home, turning off the radio and saying, wow, you know, I, you know, just now driving home with my, you know, cup of coffee that's two hours old, like, I'm now putting it all together. I think that whether people like it or not, it's not relatively unimportant. I think that however this goes down, this is gonna have a pretty big impact on Sienna and hopefully the way the audience, Sienna or otherwise, view what theater is and what theater is capable of. Honestly, I do not know what to expect. I think uh, the play would be as much of a surprise to me as it's going to be to the audience, and that I like. I think it's going to be very jarring for some people who are not used to environmental theater, but and some people will get a lot out of it and some people will hate it. You know, we keep saying the only thing we don't want is apathy. I think it'll, it'll be completely different than most plays because I mean, it's, it's all one act, it's really all one scene. I mean, you, you'd never have the blackout and the curtains closing and you never have anyone off stage. It's gonna be an awesome show. Mm -hmm. Like once we actually get to opening night, it's gonna, it's gonna be one of the best ones we can have. We are not here to answer any questions. All that you see has not really happened. We watch. We remember. We listen. Oh, that's not fair. Yes, but it works wonders. 9-11. Weapons of Weapons of mass. against the entire Greek army and die for the sake of a woman? Now, it arrives in the fullness of time. It's hard to walk away when you feel like you've done nothing. I don't feel that way about this show. It was a crazy, often frustrating, 
long, arduous trip, and it was worth it. It was really worth it. Like, we did something amazing, and I really didn't think the show was going to be as well received as it was. You know, for what it was, for those eight nights of performances, I thought it went off great. I was really impressed. Well, I wouldn't really have changed anything now that I've seen it. Mm -hmm. um, Asked me two weeks ago, I would definitely said, "Oh, we're going to change a lot because this is not going to work." And it worked. I think once the audience walked in, once the costumes came on and lights came down, I think it worked. I think it was a great success.